What's happening guys? In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can calculate performance metrics like precision, recall, and loss for TensorFlow object detection models. Let's take a deep look as to what we'll be going through. So in this video, we're first out going to start out with a pre-trained TensorFlow object detection model. So specifically, we're going to be using our face mask detection model that we built in another video, and I'll include links to that in the description below. What we're then going to do is we're going to view the training results inside of TensorBoard. We're then going to run another TensorFlow object detection script to be able to calculate our evaluation results. So this is going to allow us to calculate metrics like precision, loss, and recall. What we can then do is take TensorBoard again and visualize those results inside of TensorBoard. Let's take a look as to how this is all going to fit together. So as I was saying, first up, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be leveraging a pre-trained TensorFlow object detection model. So if you haven't done this, by all means, do check out the full stack computer vision tutorials below. Again, all in the description. We're then going to run a script, evaluate our TensorFlow object detection model using the TensorFlow object detection API. So this is a single script that allows us to calculate mean average precision, mean average recall, as well as viewing our loss metrics. And then we're going to be able to visualize those inside of TensorBoard. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty, so in order to calculate our performance metrics like precision and recall, we first out need to start with an existing object detection model. Now, in order to do this, we're going to be leveraging the real-time object detection code that we wrote in a previous tutorial. And the specific model that we're going to be using is this one over here. So the one that we created in the real-time face mask detection tutorial. Now, if you haven't checked out this playlist, I highly recommend you do. So in this, we go through installing TensorFlow object detection, building a face mask detector, building a sign language detector, as well as taking those models, converting them to TensorFlow.js and building a real-time web detection app that you can then go on ahead and deploy. So in this particular case, what we're first going to start with is the tutorial notebook. So if you actually take a look inside of the GitHub repository for real-time object detection, there's this Jupyter notebook here called tutorial.ipynb. Now in this case, I've got the exact same notebook, which you can see here. And what I'm going to do is step on down to step six and create a new cell. So this is where we're going to create the new command that allows us to calculate our performance metrics. Now, a key thing to note, in order to actually go on ahead and calculate these performance metrics, you need to have a trained model. And specifically, when I say trained model, you need to have some trained model checkpoints. So if we actually take a look inside of our model folder, so this is sort of the stock standard TensorFlow object detection structure that I've got set up in all of those tutorials. If you go into workspace, models, and specifically my SSD mobnet, you can see that I've got a number of checkpoints there already. And we've also got this folder called train, which has some of these events.out.tf events files. Now these files actually allow us to already get some logging data for our particular model out. So if we wanted to view these, what we could do is CD into that folder. So let's actually take a look. So we can jump into that folder. So I'm already in the top level folder for that particular model. So in this case, if I go back, I'm inside of evaluating object detection models. So if I actually type in LS here, you can see we've got our tutorial walkthrough, our tutorial notebooks. Now, if I jump into TensorFlow and then we, which effectively takes us here, then if I go into workspace, which takes us here. And then if I go into models and my SSD mobnet, that brings us to this folder. And then if we go into train, we can actually run TensorBoard and view those loss metrics. So if we jump into train, what we can do is run TensorBoard. And in order to do this, we just type in TensorBoard and then we pass through an argument. In this case, it's logdir, so we type dash dash log dear, and then we just pass through equals dot. So this is effectively saying run TensorBoard and all of our log files are inside of our current directory. So just to recap, so we go into our TensorFlow workspace models, my SSD mobnet forward slash train folder, which should have some log files that you can see here. And then we can run the command TensorBoard dash dash log dear equals dot. So if we run that, this will start up TensorBoard and you can see that it's successfully running at localhost 6006. So we can copy that, go on over to that route. And you can see that 
automatically we've already got some logging data there. So you can see here that we've got our classification loss, our localization loss, our normalized lo or total loss, regularization loss. So we've got a whole heap of different metrics that we can go and interrogate. We can also view our learning rate, which is down here, as well as our steps per second. So this is more of a performance metric as to how fast our GPU or our CPU is actually training. But a key thing to note is that this doesn't actually have any accuracy or performance metrics in relation to our model. So it's got throughput metrics, learning rate and loss, but we don't have anything like precision or recall to evaluate how well our model is actually performing. Now, in order to get these metrics, what we need to do is run another command. And effectively what's going to happen is inside of this folder, we're going to have a new folder created called eval. And this is going to have similar loss metrics or similar events files to our train folder, which are going to allow us to interrogate our performance. So let's go on ahead and stop TensorBoard for now. So we'll just step back into our command prompt and hit control C. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our notebook and start writing out this command. So it is a little bit long, so I'll write it out and then we'll take a step through. Alrighty, so that's our command now output. Now, eventually we're going to put this all inside of one line to make sure it compiles successfully or runs successfully when we go on back and paste it into our command prompt. But for now, let's take a step back and take a look at what we've written. So if you've gone through the other object detection tutorials, what you'll notice is that this particular command is really similar to our training command, which we had up here. But in this case, what we've actually done is we've dropped this num training steps or num train steps argument, and we've added a new one called checkpoint dear. So if we actually take a step back and read the whole thing out, what we've got is Python, and then we're passing through an argument from our string formatting down here, which is effectively going to give us this line. So we're effectively going to get out of that Python TensorFlow models research object detection forward slash model main TF2. So effectively we're passing through where our API model path is. And this comes from right up here. So when we initially set up this tutorial, we define a lot of these paths, so specifically API models path, model path, and then a little further down, we go and define this custom model name. So if you've set up everything in a similar way to what's described in the tutorial, either the face mask tutorial or the sign language detection tutorial, then the expected command that you're going to run is going to be very similar or exactly what you're seeing over here. So the next lines that we've written are dash dash model dia equals, and then we've got squiggly brackets slash squiggly brackets again. And this is effectively going to result in an argument which results in what you see here. So because we've got two arguments being passed, we're passing through our model path and our custom model name, which results in TensorFlow forward slash workspace forward slash models forward slash my SSD mobnet. Similar thing that is happening for our pipeline config path. And last but not least is a similar thing is happening for our checkpoint directory, which you can see down here. Now, again, all of this code is going to be available inside of a GitHub repo. Just check the description below, I'll link to it. Now, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to move this all into one line and make sure when you do that, that you've still got spaces between each of these arguments that you see here. So let's finish that. So ideally your command should look like this. Then what we're going to do is copy this command, go back to our command prompt, and then where we want to be is in this root folder here. So TensorFlow should be a subfolder. So if we step back, right? So we're in our top level folder, which looks something like this. And then we're going to paste that command in, and that's going to go on ahead and run our evaluation pipeline. So let's go on ahead and do that. And there you go. So that's our evaluation done initially. So you can see here that we've got a whole bunch of stuff that's calculated. So what actually happens is right up here, let's just quickly take a step back. So it should be around here. So what we did is we ended up pasting our command in 
at that top level folder. So you can see that this command is exactly the same as this command that we've got here. Let's just make this a little bit bigger. Exactly the same as what we've got here. So we've grabbed this and we've pasted it in at our top level folder. And then effectively what happens is the TensorFlow Object Detection API is going to go on ahead, look inside of our checkpoint directory and take the most recent train checkpoint and evaluate based on that. So you can see a little bit further down that it ends up picking up our checkpoint, which is at 3000 steps. So you can see that here. So eval metric at step 3000. And that's because our checkpoint or the last checkpoint that we ran up to was about step 3000. So if we actually go and take a look, so that will be checkpoint six down here. And what you've actually got here is a whole heap of performance metrics. So you can see that we've got average precision and specifically the one that we're taking a look at is this first line here. So it looks like our average precision is 0.735. And we can also take a look at a number of other metrics. So in this case, we've got average recall here as well, which is 0.758. We've also got a mean average precision, which is down here, which is reading out as the same as what we've got up there. So 0.7, or it's a little bit more detailed. So 0.734983. And likewise, we're gonna get the same mean average recall down here as well. 0.75833. And we've also got a number of loss metrics down there. So in a nutshell, that's really how to calculate those metrics. Now, the cool thing about this is that once you go and run this command, you're actually going to get a whole new eval set of logs inside of that same folder. Now, if you take a look, you can see that inside of where we had our train and our checkpoints or our train folder and our checkpoints, we've now got another folder called eval. So if we make that a little bit bigger, you can see that we've got a folder called eval. So if we step into that, we've got some logs. Now, because these are TensorFlow logs, we can again use TensorBoard to visualize them. So let's do that. So we're gonna step out of this evaluation pipeline and we're gonna go into that eval folder. So let's copy this path. And you can see that we're now inside of our eval folder. And if I type out LS, you can see that we've got our log files. Now, again, we can trigger TensorBoard from here and this is gonna allow us to view our performance metrics rather than our loss metrics this time. So if we type in TensorBoard, let's actually clear this, make it a little bit clearer. TensorBoard, same command, dash dash log dear equals dot. So again, exactly the same command because now we're in the eval folder, it's going to give us different logging metrics. So let's run that. So it'll start up TensorBoard and then again, oh, it looks like we have not typed in log dear, I've typed in low dear, let's change that. Okay, so you can see TensorBoard is running. We can just copy this command. Oh, and I've stopped it accidentally because I pressed Control C twice. Let's do that again. Let's copy this. And then if we go to TensorBoard again, same link. You can see now that what we're seeing are now our different performance metrics. So in this case, you can see our mean average precision and our precision against our different models. So large, medium, small, as well as our mean average precision at different levels of intersection over union. So this is 0.5 IOU, 0.75 IOU. So ideally what you want when you're building these TensorFlow object detection models is as high as possible mean average precision and a high as possible average recall. So ideally, so if we actually hold over this metric here, so you can see that just a little bit further down there. So if you read that smooth number, that's 0.735. And our value number is 0.735. That's our mean average precision. So we can actually take a look at some of the other metrics. In this case, we've got average recall. That's 0.7583. Exactly the same as what we had from our command line. And that about wraps up how to calculate these performance metrics for your TensorFlow object detection models. So just to quickly wrap up, what we did is we used the same code that we've done in a whole number of the full stack computer vision tutorials. And again, I'll include a link inside of the description below for you to take a look at these. And we wrote this command here, so Python TensorFlow forward slash models forward slash research forward slash object detection forward slash model main TF2. Then we specified our model directory, our pipeline config path, which is this component here, and our checkpoint directory. And that eventually gave us these model metrics. So we've cleared them out now but it eventually gave us our model metrics, which we're also able to visualize inside of TensorBoard. And that about wraps it up.
Thanks so much for tuning in guys. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell so you get notified of when I release future videos. And let me know how you went about calculating the performance of your models. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.